Okay, so in my previous video, I talked about in Golden Cheetah how to go to look at individual rides and understand uh, how that's working in terms of your training or your fitness or whatever. So today what I want to talk about those looking at the bigger picture, so in particular under the Trends tab, and understanding uh, how you can look at your training in a large chunk and see if it's taking you the right direction. So uh, really the only thing we're going to spend a lot of time today on that is the Performance Manager chart. Um, I'll give you some ideas about some other things you can do, but this is going to be the meat of today. So first thing is just a little bit of housekeeping in order to make all this work uh, as best as possible. First thing, if you haven't already done this, I highly recommend you create a season in Golden Cheetah. So when you're in the Trends tab, go to the Date Ranges, click on this little box there, add a season, and it's pretty straightforward. Just don't worry about any changing any of these sorts of uh, any of these sorts of values. Okay, so that's going to give you a season. The main reason we want to create a season is so we can create events. So once you do that, you can go ahead and click on the same box for events, add an event, and it's very straightforward to put in the name and the date. So the nice thing about events, what you've got that is now when I look at my performance manager chart, which we'll talk about this in a second, um, I can see where all the important things were for me. So I went ahead and put my races on here. Okay, so now let's talk about um, getting this set up so yours at least looks similar or sort of the best way possible. So go up to more, go to all chart settings, and the performance manager chart. Uh, the, the most important thing is to go over to curves and then go to any one, say the first one, click edit. And then yours is initially going to say, I think we're on the acute training load, so your access label would say ATL. Go ahead and change that to stress. And then just do the same thing for all three of them. And then finally under stress balance, go ahead and change the baseline. when you. So first off, again, this is going to be something different. Just change it to stress. And then the baseline is going to come as negative 999. Just change that to zero. Okay. So now let's talk about, so now your chart should look pretty darn similar to mine. Um, a word of warning too, if you add an event and it doesn't show up, click to a different tab and come back and then it will show up. For some reason it doesn't refresh automatically. All right, so I want to talk about um, what are we looking at here and how can we use this. So there's three things on this chart. There's the blue line, which you can see from the legend, is the chronic training load. The pink line is your acute training load and the yellow is your stress balance. So these two, or the blue and the pink, are the are sort of the things that drive everything else. What you can think about is the pink acute training load is your short-term effect from training. So you can think, in general, right, if you go out and do some intervals today, two things are going to happen. The first thing is you're going to be tired. And that's essentially what the purple is showing you. It's kind of showing you how tired you are because it's looking at uh, the recent work you've done. In particular, this looks at the last seven days and does an average. It's a weighted average. It doesn't just average seven days worth of work. It, it gives more stress than more recent days. But it's a sort of average of the past seven days. So you can think of this as saying how tired you are. The blue does a similar average. In fact, the computation between these two is almost exactly the same, except that this guy does an average over 42 days. Uh, those, if you go up to Tools and go to Options, then right here, short-term stress is looking at seven days, long-term stress is 42 days. So if for whatever reason you felt like you need to change that, you can easily do that there under tools and options. So this is fatigue or tiredness from working recently. The blue one, chronic training load, you can think of that like your fitness, right? It, it doesn't care so much about what you did yesterday. It cares what you've done over the last 42 days. So it is looking at the accumulated work you've done. So another way that some people will call these is they'll call this um, fitness and fatigue. Okay, so what do we do if we want to get stronger? Well, the obvious answer, right, is you go train more. But on the other hand, if you do a whole bunch of training, then you're not going to go out tomorrow and expect to suddenly be faster because you're going to be tired. So the idea is you want a high accumulated training load, a high chronic training load, but you don't want your, uh, your tiredness, your fatigue to be too high. So the way that's expressed is taking your chronic training load and subtracting your acute training load. And that is exactly what this yellow curve here is. So we can see in this whole area from March 3rd all the way up to whatever date this is, about June 6th, my chronic training load is less than my acute training load. So when I subtract those, I should get a negative number. And sure enough, right, my stress balance is all negative. That's why we set the baseline to zero, make it a little bit easier to see. 
And then here it switched, so I had a positive training stress balance for a while, and, and then so forth. Okay, so fine, that explains the chart, but how are we supposed to use that? So in my season, um, the two races, the first two races that I cared about were these two right here. You can't read it very clearly, but there's a criterium, the Grinnell Crit, and then a Rose Festival Road Race. So all these races before, these for me were just training races. I just want to get out there and get miles on my legs. So I didn't care at all what my performance manager chart looked like. What I knew though is that I wanted to keep building up my chronic training load. I wanted to keep building up sort of my overall long-term fitness up until this point. I wanted it to be about as high as it could. So how do you do that? Well, I had to make sure that every, every week uh, my acute training load was fairly high, that it was going up. Uh, that way it would sort of drag my chronic training load up with it. You can see right here, right, once my acute training load drops, so does my chronic. So why did it drop? Well, it dropped because I had my two races that I cared about coming up. So I knew that I could keep training, but that would make me too tired, and I would still have a negative stress balance. So instead, I took some time off. In fact, I kind of took more time off than I wanted to because I had to take a forced vacation for parents coming to town. Um, so this dropped more than I would expect, or more than I would have liked. So if you read some books like the uh, Racing and Training with a Power Meter, they'll give you specific values they suggest for you to increase your chronic training load, or CTL, how much to increase that by, how much to increase your ATL, and what your TSB, your training stress balance, what they suggest. The problem is um, these things are so different for each person that uh, I think it's a little misleading to try to hit a specific number. I believe the best way to, to use this chart is when we go out and ride and when we go out and train, we've all got this mental, um, we've got this feeling about how strong we are, how tired we are, how our training has been overall, how good we feel. The thing is, right, there's kind of a lot of things to hold in your head with that. So I think the advantage of the performance manager chart, the PMC, is you can attach a graph, you can attach a picture to what it is you're feeling. So pretend that this whole right hand chunk of the graph we could not see. I was leading up to Grinnell and I was at this day, say. I would see, okay, great, my CTL has been climbing. I feel like I'm getting stronger and this helps, um, this reinforces that fact. But right now, if I kept training like I was, my fatigue would be higher than my fitness and it's believable that I might just be too tired. So I started to take a little bit of a break. But then after taking a couple days of less training or days off, I saw that, well, this is actually dropping very low. And if I continue to not train, my acute training load is going to plummet. My chronic train load is going to be dropping too, sort of reinforcing the fact that I'm probably taking too much time off. So I put in a little bit of effort there again. So you can use this to help, uh, help guide you. In addition here, I went ahead and put in some races that haven't happened yet, but that I'm shooting for. These are also two that I care about. So I can see that once again, after these races, I took a short break and I started training again. So my CTL is climbing, which is good. And I see that my ATL is still above my CTL. It's helping to pull it up. So I know I'm heading the right direction. Um, I'm training enough and I need to keep pushing it up here. Also, I can kind of see sort of the slope of how much I could increase by. I did not have any um, injuries or sicknesses in this time. So I know that this is an acceptable rate for me to climb uh, to increase both those. So I can watch these and see if I'm increasing it fast enough or not. So that's really it as far as the performance manager chart. Um, helps gives you a nice picture. Now for the trends tab there's a lot of other things here. In fact I've removed some of them that I didn't use and, and tweaked some that I do use. Um, but it, how you use it really depends a lot on your personal situation. So for example, if you're someone who likes to do a lot of time trials, um, or maybe a triathlete, what you could do, go up to more, go to chart settings, and then let's add in a new curve for us. So I'm gonna click plus and add. Uh, so let's say you're a time trialist, you probably care about your 20 minute power, so 20 minute peak power. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight maybe my four best. So now I can see how my uh, 20 minute power was also trending with that. Now I don't really do a lot of 20 minute power work so um, mine's probably not gonna trend very well with that. But if that was something you cared about, you can also include it and basically see how does it relate to uh, your acute training and your chronic training. You know, if your acute gets real high, is your power dropping? Um, how, does, how do they work together? So I'm gonna remove that on mine. So 
there's so many charts in here. Um, some kind of interesting ones are aerobic power and anaerobic power. It just plots your bests for, um, so this is my anaerobic power. So everything from one minute, excuse me, everything from 10 seconds up to three minutes, and you can tweak those in the same way. So let me give one more a suggestion or sort of a, an example of other things you could do. So I created two new tabs. So you just click on this guy up top and do add a chart and do a metric trends. And what you can do, typically the easiest way is just pick a preset that's close to what you want. And I don't know, I'm just sort of clicking a random one, click apply, and then it will give it to you and you can tweak it. Or if you want, you can go to curves and just add in your own curves. Okay, but I don't want to do that, so let me cancel that. So two that I created are aerobic stress and anaerobic stress. So what these are is, it's my performance manager chart, but I only put aerobic information in there. So let's look and see which information I have. Instead of having my entire uh, long-term training load, or CTL, and my entire short-term, or ATL, I just did the aerobic one, long-term, the aerobic short-term, and the aerobic balance. And also, I put in my 20-minute power, since that's kind of the main aerobic um, uh, benchmark. So now, one of the, so you can't see too clearly here, but the main race I care about is the second line, which is a road race, which is clearly very aerobic. So rather than just looking at my performance manager chart, which doesn't um, differentiate my aerobic work versus my anaerobic work, I can instead see how is my aerobic work um, trending towards a state road race. So now it looks like I'm okay, I'm above there, but there were sort of some times where maybe I wasn't pulling my aerobic power up enough. So I can keep an eye on that. Similarly, uh, if this were a crit that I was going for, I have could look at my anaerobic one, where I have a sort of a similar thing going on. And this time I included my one minute peak power and my 15 second peak power to get an idea how those are trending. So there's so much you can tailor to your own specific situation here. Um, there's also some simple things, just like how much time did I spend in each power zone, which kind of gives you a little better uh, breakdown than say like looking at Strava or whatever, than just hours or miles written. So I highly recommend spending time with the performance manager chart, um, making sure that your fitness and your fatigue are going the direction you want, especially as you get closer to key races for you. And then after that, I highly recommend adding some things that are important to you, going, adding new charts and playing with them. There's such an incredible amount of data in Golden Cheetah uh, that there's really a lot you can do with it. And it's up to you to make it exactly your specific situation. Having said that, if there's uh, questions you guys have or specific things you want me to talk about or how to, how to use some specific chart in here, uh, please put a, uh, put a question down in the comments section or just leave me a comment and I'll be glad to look at those. All right. Thanks a lot and good luck, guys.